Thank you. Uh, the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Westmoreland, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, ma'am, and, and thank you. But, um, you know, uh, most of y'all are in the business world, and, and how long do you think it would have taken y'all to sit down and try to come up with a remedy for uh, losing $18 billion in about four years? Would y'all have thought about that anywhere down the road? We're just a little late, I guess, in trying to do this. I think since 2005, uh, this program's gone a whole about $18 billion. I think it's paid off a couple of billion uh, since then. But um, the government does not uh, seem to sense that losing money is a problem. Uh, but it is to all the taxpayers of this country, and so we've got to do something to remedy this, but we don't want to uh, uh, do anything that doesn't make sense. Two, two, we have two speeds up here, do nothing and knee jerk, and uh, too many of our solutions uh, come from the knee jerk uh, uh, type thing. But Mr. Ellis, I wanted to ask you, is there any type of program that uh, any of the environmental groups or conservation groups have about going in and buying some of this uh, uh, property that uh, may have had a total loss that is adjacent to a wetlands or uh, is there any type of program that, that y'all are aware of or that y'all are thinking about uh, trying to create that would do that? Um, well, uh, speaking uh, for uh, smarter, safer, the coalition. I mean, we're a budget group, but the, there are environmental groups in that coalition, and certainly there have been uh, interest both uh, after major uh, disasters to buy, purchase uh, properties and buy out the owners, and then um, at the value the home was prior to the disaster, and then uh, using that for conservation or other things along those lines. There was a separate program that was created uh, years ago called Challenge 21 that was looking at that. Um, and so I certainly think that the mitigate that that tool and mitigation are certainly appropriate areas for FEMA and and for this program to get involved in and, and actually could pay dividends in the long run. Mr. Westmoreland, yes. If I add to that, the 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 current program, current federal, the national flood insurance program does have funds allocated for uh, mitigating property losses, including purchasing properties that are repetitive loss properties, and then the pre-disaster mitigation programs that FEMA has does allocate money uh, as a percentage of the overall payments for uh, disaster mitigation for just this purpose. I think our view would be that maybe FEMA has not been as aggressive as it could be in utilizing those funds and certainly would encourage the Congress to consider enhancing those funds to achieve the goal that you mentioned. If I can also answer the comment, you, it wasn't really a question you asked at the beginning about planning. I represent the reinsurance industry. and. Uh, nearly all insurance companies and most state insurance plans, like the California Earthquake Authority and others, do in fact plan for the outlier year, the severe loss in frequent year, by buying reinsurance to protect them against that. And that's what we're recommending that the flood insurance mm -hmm. program do as well. Okay. Talking about the repetitive losses, I know that uh, uh, about, uh, I think it's 2 percent of the policies are for repetitive, but 25 percent of the losses uh, is on the repetitive. What would what would uh, uh, some of the insurance companies' uh, uh, idea be for remitting that when two percent of your premiums is covering uh, twenty five percent of your losses? Congressman, may I answer that? Um, I represent a primary insurer, and um, I'd like to uh, to remind us of the phrase and the old adage that one bitten twice shy. And this is what's happened with repetitive loss properties. Looking at it as a primary insurer, if we insured a property that uh, insured flood losses on a property and some natural disaster came in and the property was destroyed, if the property was rebuilt in the same location with no mitigation, um, I would be not inclined to insure that property a second time. And I would suggest that we need corrections in the National Flood Insurance Program to do that. We don't want to allow or have people rebuild in areas that, under the same circumstances, will have these repetitive losses. It's simply not fair to the American taxpayer. Um, there are folks that wish to do so. If they wish to rebuild in these, in these areas, their needs, they need, number one, to charge or to be charged actuarially sound rates. Mm -hmm. If they want to absorb that risk, they need to pay for that risk. 
They need to pay for it, not the American taxpayer. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Mr. Rudenberg, I know that uh, I come from a home building uh, background too, and a lot of times uh, you're faced with um, having a uh, lot that uh, has got a lot of contour to it, let's say, uh, and part of it is uh, in a floodplain, a 100-year floodplain or, or whatever, but the floor level may be 15 feet uh, above the uh, flood level. Uh, my experience has been that the homeowner still had to buy flood insurance, uh, even if the, the floor level was at a level that it would be impossible to flood. Is that what, does that hinder you or, or have you found that in any of the subdivisions or whatever that you've uh, done business in? Uh, yes, Congressman, we do find that it is an issue for some people, but other people are willing to say, if I want to be on this lot, for normally there's a nice view or something else, so they will pay the premium, and we have to do, uh, we have to work with our county to build it in a way that will ensure that it's not a burden to the future. I think I might, if I could quickly add, that in many of the new developments that we're doing in my area, we now build for an 18-inch uh, rainstorm event. We have other developments that are, have no, um, retention areas whatsoever or somewhere in the middle and we're all paying the same and perhaps in the future we should be looking at whether or not we should be charged based upon the risk and if you have that much capacity for stormwater then maybe that's a lower risk. I would also suggest that if you're looking for things to do that we seem to have a few people available to work on um, mitigation and for that one to two percent there may be a program where you want to do a lower interest rate program or something on that order for people to go ahead and modify their homes out of their own money, spend their money, and that would reduce the risk of the program. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman's time is expired. I, I, and I yield back. Thank you. Uh, I would note